32 this morning, a 911 call came from a residence on Chandler's Lane Condominiums at 23002 Chandler's Lane in the city of Olmsted Falls. The caller indicated that the unit was on fire. She then disconnected and evacuated the unit. At 1039, Olmsted Falls police arrived on scene and reported heavy fire coming from the third floor. So a working fire was dispatched. The building is a three-story wood frame construction, multi-unit structure. There are approximately there are 16 units on each floor for a total of 48 units in the structure. A primary search was conducted by firefighters and they declared an all clear on the building. Secondary searches were also done at a later time. At 1121, we ordered all firefighters to evacuate the building for safety reasons. We didn't want any firefighters in danger uh, into the fire. Approximately five minutes later, we made a secondary uh, call for everyone to evacuate the building to make sure that all the firefighters heard the first call. Fire crews were on scene from Olmsted Falls, Olmsted Township, Brook Park, North Olmsted, North Ridgeville, Rocky River, Westlake, Brooklyn, Fairview, Strongsville, Berea, Cleveland Airport, and Brunswick sent one of their squads. Also, Berea Police did a great job. I want to thank them. They handled our city for a while where our units were busy at the fire. And again, I want to thank Berea Police. A female resident was transferred uh, to the hospital to the Southwest by squad. At this time, I don't know what her condition is. Two firefighters were also transported to St. John West Shore with minor injuries. And at this time, we not, do not have an update. As of 2.13 p.m. this afternoon, all gas had been shut off to the entire building. We also established a relief station here in City Hall at our senior center to, to take care of all the victims and the residents, to give them a cool place, gave them water and food and shelter. We also called the State Fire Marshal, ATF, Red Cross, Olmstead CERT, which is our community emergency response team, and Southwest Hospital. I would like to thank the Southwest Hospital CEO. I called him Bill Young, and he sent three nurses to our senior center to help out with all of the victims, and Mr. Young himself also showed up here to help out, and I want to thank him for that. There has been an outpouring of support from our entire community. I want to thank all of my fellow citizens in Olmsted Falls and also thank all of the people who live in our surrounding community. Uh, again, there's been a great support in our community. And if anyone wants to help out, please call the Red Cross. The fire is currently under investigation, so unfortunately I'm not going to be able to give you a lot of comments uh, about the fire itself. Uh, but it is under investigation, and I'll entertain a few questions. Thank you. Can you tell us about the fire suppression systems in the building and whether you can tell if, if they function and, and whether the smoke detectors function in the various floors? Uh, there were sprinklers uh, on the first floor for sure, but I don't believe there were any on the third floor. And some, and some were uh, working, I believe. So some residents were, were concerned about that. What would you or the, the chief have to say to them about their questions about those systems? Again, once the investigation is fully completed, I'd be more than happy to answer all those questions. But again, since uh, it's a preliminary investigation, we don't have a lot of information on that. We've had a lot of people talk about how quickly the fire spread actually through the roof of the building where there may not be firewalls present. How difficult does that make it for uh, your crews to get in there and fight a fire if there's no protection? Very difficult. It was a, what they call wood frame structure. And whenever you have a wood frame, wood frame structure, uh, again, these fires travel very fast. And again, usually in the attics, there's open areas and that allows a fire to extend from one end of the building to the other very quickly. Uh, in my 30 years experience of fighting fires, the, the, these kind of fires always pose a lot of problems. And again, I want to thank our crews, not only from Olmsted Falls, but all the surrounding communities. They did a good job getting people out, protecting people. And I'm just glad that it did not extend to any other buildings in the complex. So, uh, so uh, they did have firewalls or they did not have? Is that how that worked? 
We don't know for sure until the investigation is complete, but I can tell you that in my experience, a lot of these buildings do not have, uh, they have an open attic that run from one end of the building to the other. Again, until the investigation is complete, we cannot give you, you know, Excellent. complete info. But in the past, a lot of similar buildings, yeah. Mayor, we saw the ATF there and also the State Fire Marshal's Office. How, how is the investigation being coordinated and, and who's going to be handling what? They're part of our preliminary investigation. As of right now, the Olmstead Falls Fire Chief will be in charge, um, but he will be working with all the other agencies, State Fire Marshal, ATF, and any other agencies that we th he thinks he'll need in the near future, he'll call. Is there any reason to believe that there's anything suspicious about what happened? It's under investigation, so unfortunately I can't comment on that. For those who don't know why ATF? No oh, people. because they're part of our preliminary investigation and we want to do, uh, get all agencies involved from the initial standpoint, and then if we decide later we didn't need them, we just want to get everyone on scene as quickly as possible for the initial investigation. And based on the severity and how quickly this fire spread was, um, was manpower ever an issue? I know we had 13 departments in total show up, but at the beginning, was it difficult for your crews to jump on it? No, the first unit on scene got water on the fire very quickly. Our chief did a good job. He called for a third alarm very quickly, so he had plenty of units on scene initially. And Again, I want to uh, point out that he did a great job uh, striking a third alarm very early on to get all the units we needed yeah. and all the firefighters. Uh, what time? Take you to fight the fire? Yeah. We're still looking at all the dispatch times and what unit on scene time, so we'll get that to you tomorrow. Is there a d time that the fire was declared out? Again, we'll have to look at all the dispatch logs. I can't give you that now. We'll have more information tomorrow. Right. Can, you, can you talk a little bit about the, the community support in specific? I know there's at least one pizza place who stepped forward and said, yes, so, need yeah, just talk we about have pizza place supporting us and uh, Shakers at Olmstead Township. They provided food for all the residents who are here at the Senior Center. They did a great job, too. We had a lot of citizens bringing bottled water. Uh, and again, in, in, in my background, in my history, I've never seen such an outpouring of support at one fire in my 30 years. Can you tell for the residents how many days before they're given access, or do you know, or? Right now, we don't know. Okay. It's gonna take some time, so. All right, I'd like to thank everyone for being here this afternoon. Thank you. Okay. Chief, no comments? Unless you have a question, a specific question. <laughs> yeah. I think the mayor uh, covered everything pretty good. Yeah. All right, thank, thank you. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. Thank you.